<laughs> it's still senior season right now, you guys, and apparently they look like this too. It's, it's she's beautiful, you know. This is her beautiful mom. <laughs> That's how we roll down here, man. All you crazies and your rallies and all. Come to New Orleans and have some fun. Today, I want to talk to you about perspective. You know, there's many ways you can look at the world, but there's only one way you can look through the camera. Or is there? I love this camera. These old cameras back in the 50s and 60s, when you look down, the image is actually reversed because there's only one mirror right here and one refracted image is reversed. The camera you're holding, that little bump we have on the top of our camera, or used to have on top of our camera, that's another mirror. So it re-inverts it so you can see as you see, pretty cool, huh? But what's neat about these cameras back in the day is that it forced you to look down, which is why photographers basically had this thing about waist level. And when things are waist level, things are more true. That's cool. So when I got my Fuji X-T3, the major difference from that camera and my Canon Mark III camera was I had to look in the camera on my Canon Mark III. I had to look through that viewfinder, you know? And even though we're bending and we're squatting and we're kneeling, you're still having to look through the camera or at least blindly guess. The Fuji, now that a lot of these digital cameras now have those backs, the LCD backs, you don't have to look through the camera's eye level anymore. You can totally have the camera like this. It absolutely brings me back to the old film cameras. And perspective was everything. The worst lens ever invented for the photographer was the wide angle lens. And the reason why is it, most wide angle lenses distort unless you are absolutely even with your subject, meaning if you have a fence behind you, if you're doing architecture, and if there are any lines in the picture, or even people, if you're wide and you're too close to the person, they look larger than they are. Or if you're too wide and your angle isn't right with those lines, they distort and bend. These cameras force you to stay at waist level, which means the view is actually straight. Pretty cool, huh? So if you were a street photographer back in the day, this was your camera. Because all you had to do is click and go. That's it. So today, I'm actually using perspective more than anything in my photography. The reason why I want to talk about perspective today is because if you find yourself still bringing the camera here to shoot, you're at your head level, okay? You're at this level where most of the cool, awesome, artsy angles are very low. Maybe they're shooting through things. Learning how to see what's around you and how will it benefit your subject matter is what I believe true perspective is. It's not just kneeling down to the ground or it's not just going above your head and aiming down. Perspective for me is how can I take my immediate surroundings and use them in my image for the perspective I want to show for my client.
things that had opened up for me as a creative photographer in general are these digital cameras that are enabling you to not only stay here, have some creative freedom. You know, the AI focus on these cameras are amazing. If I put it on finding the eyes, it does a fantastic job of finding the eyes. I can trust it a little bit more. But what I love to do is find branches, trees, flowers, just anything that I could shoot through or blur in the front so my subject is sharp. How can I do better than just putting somebody in the open field and taking a picture? Lighting is everything. Emotion is everything. But when you can take those elements and find your own way of showing perspective, to me, that's what people are willing to pay for. And most importantly, it helps me be a better artist. It motivates me to keep creating. And I love, absolutely love, that I am going to some of the same locations I've been going to for almost 28 years now. And I'm still finding new ways to take pictures. That, my friends, is perspective. Pretty cool, very cool actually. So this is what I want you to do today. I want you to take the normal picture that you normally do, and if you have real clients that you're gonna do this with, you know, you kinda have your go-to poses or setups or where you wanna bring them. Take your picture so you know you have the shot, but then I want you to take the next five pictures very differently. Bend down, shoot through something, put them in the middle of something, Learn at what f-stop you're going to shoot so you're giving some depth of field. You know how your subject is sharp, but other things are blurry. Can your camera go 1.8? Can it only go 4.5? Those are the things that are your tools. And your perspective will become limited according to your tools. So when some people say, hey, what setting was that shot at? I know what you mean. You, you want to know if do you have the equipment to even complement the same image I just took. I get that, but sometimes the settings are not the answer. It's how you use your surroundings around you and work the light, evoke emotion with your clients, create a final piece of artwork that you want to actually be proud of for yourself and they are willing to buy. That's how we stay in business. But if you're only staying right here, maybe it's time to change your perspective a little bit. What do you think? All right, you guys, so to keep you up to date, my subscribers who have been around for a long time, you guys are, are really following me for my journey. And part of my journey, as you know of now, is that I am changing locations to my studio. Um, the, the COVID scenario has decreased a lot of our event industry business, and it's forcing me to downsize, which is not a bad thing because I'm ready for my next chapter. I have some awesome new things coming up, to be honest with you. And um, I'm going to have a podcast that's going to be more regular and there's going to be a lot more teaching going on on this channel. Because even though I'm happy to show you my experiences, I know if you were like me when I was learning, I would have loved to have the, uh, the speaker or the teacher talk about why he did what he did, not just how he did it. You know, me telling you a lens to use has nothing to do with why I took the picture and used the settings I did do. Um, I can work an entire event on only two lenses. And because of today's video on perspective, that is how you use your equipment and your knowledge to the best of your ability and never stay dry on your art. You know, there are always new ways of seeing things and today, I want you to force yourself to find another perspective, all right? So, this COVID disaster of a virus thing has given me new perspective as far as finding what is the silver lining in this tragedy and how can we move forward with whatever our new norm will be. Um, I do not know how to stay down. Katrina, the hurricane, did not keep us down. The drop of the economy explosion did not keep us down 
there's always ways to move forward. So perspective goes a lot further than just a camera in your hands. You know what I mean? All right. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here. I have so many cool things to show you, but the lack of jobs is keeping me unmotivated to show you any behind the scenes. But all that's going to change in two or three short weeks. It's hot out here, y'all. That's well, welcome to New Orleans. 95 in the shade, humidity at about a thousand percent. This is like being in the Amazon jungle, man. I would assume. <laughs> So look, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope this ending of the video does not keep you dizzy or give you any reason to pull over the car because you can't stay and watch in the video because I'm moving and you're kind of moving. Are we moving together? Opposite? Are you taking a left or a right right now? This is really weird. <laughs> Y'all stay focused on your dreams. Peace.